What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Monday, and welcome to this week's episode of Rant TNH. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and today we're going to be talking about just how water resistant your watch really is. All right, before we jump into water resistance, a quick wristwatch check. I am wearing a beautiful, uh, really unpolished, a mint example of a solid yellow gold Rolex reference 1601. This watch was listed in the Theo and Harris watch shop not too long ago, and at the time of recording, it is still in the watch shop. So at the time of viewing, it also might be. Geez, it is difficult to record things ahead. No good deed goes unpunished. But anyway, let's get into the topic here, a topic that infuriates me. I think that the conversation here is so built on deception, you know, and, and, and really, really high stakes as well, that, uh, that I'm kind of disgusted by all of this revelation. Because I, I, I've just learned all of this as well, which is super embarrassing, but we're here to be honest and we're here to learn. So um, water resistance, what do these numbers mean? And, and really, can you go swimming with your watch? Okay, so let's start here. There are six different categories of water resistant ratings and your watch has one of them. Uh, number one, the absence of a water resistant rating. This means, and many watches do have it, this means you can't, it, can't, it can't go in the water, you can't wash your hands with the watch, you surely can't shower with the watch. It should not be exposed to any level of water exposure or even exposure to steam. Let's say for instance in the sauna or if you leave your watch in the bathroom while you shower. Why? What are we worried about? Well, the steam and or the water will penetrate the case, damage the dial, the hands, and worst of all, the movement. And to me, there is nothing wrong with that. If a watch does not claim to be water resistant, then it is on you if you expose it to water. But it's the next category to me that opens up the door to kind of a shit show. And this second category is water resistant up to 30 meters, which is actually where Panerai's newest 38 millimeter Luminor release falls. Now, the way that I and anyone else who speaks English uh, would read this is water resistant up to 30 meters. Pretty self-explanatory. 30 meters is 98 feet. So you would assume <laughs> that the watch would be resistant to water up to 98 feet. But actually, to my incredible surprise, this is is not true. Believe it or not, this rating is almost as useful as no rating at all. In, in fact, it probably does do damage because it instills a false sense of, of confidence. And everything that I've gathered online and everything that I've learned in researching the topic, most watchmakers and large retail shops hardly even still recommend washing your hands, showering, or exposing your watch to any level of water. What? Are you f***ing kidding me? I just spent 500, 100, 500, 800, 2,000, 5,000, 6,000 dollars on a watch that says, it says water resistant up to 30 f***ing meters, which is 98 feet. I take it in the shower and now I'm the jerk off? How does that make any sense? I'm sorry I'm angry. I just think that the, someone needs to step in on this. Uh, someone's got to raise a red flag and say that this is wrong. I, I would just imagine there have to be horror stories out there. So now knowing this, knowing 30 meters basically means it's not water resistant at all, even though it's 98 feet, I kind of, I, I, not I kind of, I retract all of my opinions about, about the, the, the Panerai Luminor 38, which was recently released. I thought it's lack of comparable water resistance because nine, 98 feet versus, uh, I think typically they're 100 meters, so that's something like 300 feet. I thought that, that was not a big deal. You know, I was like, okay, I'm never gonna go 98 feet anyway. In my opinion, in, in my opinion, my life, if I could take a watch in the pool, a, a modern watch, if I could take a modern watch in the pool, I'm cool with it. Like that's, that my, <clears throat> my Panerai can go in the pool, great. Am I gonna be diving with it? No. That's why I gave it a thumbs up. Uh, but at this point, now knowing that Panerai, a dive watch, right? Like a watch whose entire history is predicated upon, you know, being supreme underwater, can't even go in the kiddie pool? Bad. <laughs> really, really wrong. And now the next level of a water resistant classification, uh, 50 meters. Now 50 meters, 164 feet. Again, we would think that we are just fine swimming. And technically it seems that you can swim with a 50, you know, 50 meter water resistant watch, but it still isn't unanimously encouraged. You know, <laughs> 
I'm sorry. I, I, I got I to gotta cool down. But that, that still seems uh, insane to me. Um, and, and the ambiguity, too, is really, is really worrisome. Again, if I spent one, two, five, eight hundred, two thousand dollars $2,000 on a watch, I want to guarantee that I can now swim with this watch. I don't want... It, everything should definitely be okay, probably. What did you say? The next level is a hundred meters of water resistance, which is 324 feet, which is now without question okay to swim with. Uh, people even cite it's okay to swim long distances and for extended amounts of time. Um, it's okay to expose it to currents and it's okay to expose it to real um, e exposure in swimming, snorkeling, you know, swimming in the pool, all, all things like that. But still, even with 324, you know, meters of resistance, you still can't dive with it. Um, and, 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 and to my understanding, the distinction here is not just depth, it's the rapid increase of pressure and how a watch that at 324 meters still isn't really able to adjust the pressure that quickly and you can ruin it. And once again, even though we're at 100 meters and that seems to be a pretty well-respected classification, there's still a pretty big hazard for something that like people do all the time, like dive. Like that's like a it's like we don't we do that all the time during the summer like I don't know if I feel like if I'm in Mexico or I'm in Florida on a catamaran you know and I'm wearing my whatever watch my hundred meter water resistant watch here are a couple examples of these watches I would never even think twice to just diving in but I guess uh, it's my lucky day because I don't I don't swim with watches that's that's, that's 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 really where that's really where I stand here and now finally the last classification uh the Mac daddy seemingly the only actual reliable classification um is is this collection of watches they're classified ISO 6425 or or just divers and then a depth number written on the dial or the case that corresponds to uh, their their ability to be exposed to that level of water exposure. And this is wonderful. Uh, I completely concede and understand that this is a special type of watch. Not all watches, you know, should have this. Uh, not all watches should have any of this classification. You know, just just to be totally you know transparent here, I don't think that a Patek Calatrava should be able to just go swimming easily. So I have no delusions here. Uh, and and this. This isn't my entry level. I, I seem to be pretty much so okay at 100 meters. Um, but what I'm really trying to get at here is I've purchased hundreds of watches. I've probably purchased over a thousand watches in the last three years. I don't know what number it is, but it's it, but probably somewhere around there because I think we've sold about a thousand watches. And a, a dealer has never told me, never. And, I, and I've dealt with dealers, yes, several times, but also one-offs where I'm purchasing a, whatever watches. No one has ever broken this down for me. And, and because I thought it was so obvious, I never even thought to ask. And again, that's just my, on, that's, that's just honesty. And the reason that it was never truly relevant to me is because I deal in vintage and I have never recommended a vintage watch owner to swim or dive or to do any of these things with vintage watches. So to me, it's an across the board, stay away, you know, wear, wear, wear your SKX uh, or, or wear your Submariner or wear whatever. Wear anything else than the new day date you just bought from the Theo and Harris watch shop. Even though the watches have been entirely serviced and pressure tested again and again, not just once, but I think three times pressure test over the course of the two week examination period at the end of our service like this is not a joke we take it very seriously but still you know because it's the nature of vintage and no vintage dealers will ever tell you that it's okay to just swim with your watches no matter how many times it's, no, the service could be a thousand dollars and they're still gonna say by the way like just 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 don't do that you never know and the risk is too high. It outweighs the reward here. Great, you got to see your vintage GMT in Cancun in the water. But even if it's a one in 35 shot that you're going to ruin it, it's not worth it. Uh, so that, 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 that's been my experience. And frankly, uh, I am disgusted with the level of ambiguity um, and the lack of reliability in this field. I think it's, frankly, I think it's more important than timekeeping. I really do. Um, a timekeeping within, you know, with, within a certain range is, is not nearly as important as water resistance. You're talking about the difference between, you know, being already less accurate than a phone, but a little bit less accurate versus ruining your whole f***ing watch. So to me, I'm pretty grossed out, but I'm glad that you guys now have more information than I had last week. Uh, that means my job is done. Thank you guys all for watching. Click subscribe right down below if you enjoyed this video and found it informational. I will see you all tomorrow on In The Metal. <laughs>